Autophagy is a stress response often as a result of low nutrient availability to the cell. Autophagy has been linked to long-term disease prevention and overall increases in lifespan, meaning the number of years an individual lives. Exercise training has the ability to stimulate autophagy. In fact, many researchers have stated that autophagy is an essential way exercise provides so many health benefits. So, how does exercise induce autophagy? Exercise is able to induce autophagy due to the high energy demands exercise puts on the cell. ATP is the energy molecule of the cell. High levels of ATP in the cell indicate a high energy state. Muscles require energy to contract. Therefore, muscle contraction uses up large amounts of ATP. The more ATP that is used up by muscle during exercise, the lower the energy state of the cell becomes. However, normally ATP is broken down into ADP and 1-phosphate. But in extremely strenuous conditions, a cell can produce a new ATP molecule by bonding two ADP molecules together. This produces one molecule of ATP and one molecule of AMP. Considering this reaction only happens when the cell is running low on ATP, a buildup of AMP is the indicator that the cell is in a low energy state. Autophagy is stimulated by the enzyme AMPK. AMP is the molecule that stimulates the enzyme AMPK. Thus, AMPK is turned on when the cell is in a low energy state because AMP, the molecule that turns on AMPK, is produced when a cell is in a low energy state. Aerobic exercise uses up enough ATP to put the cell in a low enough energy state that the production of AMP would occur, which turns on the AMPK enzyme and initiates autophagy. So, how is autophagy linked to the health benefits of exercise? First, autophagy is linked to survival of heart cells. The heart is dependent on the mitochondria to provide the energy the heart needs to contract. In order for the heart to beat, the mitochondria needs to produce the energy for contraction by producing ATP. The special situation of the heart, unlike most other muscles, is that the heart must continuously contract throughout life. This means the heart constantly demands ATP from the mitochondria to fuel contraction. The demand for ATP is so great that as much as 30 to 40% of the cell volume of heart cells is mitochondria. Additionally, the heart usually does not grow new cells. Thus, the same heart cells must last throughout all of adult life to keep the heart alive. However, if mitochondria becomes damaged, they can send signals to initiate the death of the cell. This is because damage to the mitochondria can initiate the programmed cell death pathway known as apoptosis. Free radicals damage the mitochondria. Additionally, free radicals are produced in the mitochondria during the production ATP, whether an individual is at rest or during exercise. Exercise training increases the production of ATP, which increases the production of free radicals. So, how is exercise training beneficial for the heart if it increases production of free radicals? This is because exercise training also stimulates autophagy in the heart. One of the main benefits to the heart is a specific type of autophagy known as mitophagy. Mitophagy is autophagy of the mitochondria. As the heart mitochondria becomes damaged from producing ATP and free radicals, exercise training stimulates mitophagy to repair the mitochondria. When mitophagy is initiated, proteins from the autophagosome can bind with proteins that are expressed on damaged mitochondria. This causes the damaged portion to break off from the rest of the mitochondria and enter the autophagosome, and eventually, the damaged portion of mitochondria is destroyed. The remaining portion of the mitochondria is able to grow back a new, healthier portion. Thus, mitophagy stimulated by exercise allows the mitochondria to renew itself, protecting it from the damage of free radicals. This continual renewal of the mitochondria that is stimulated by continual exercise training keeps the mitochondria healthy enough to not signal for death of the cell, but rather to maintain the energy needed for continual contraction of the heart. Thus, keeping the mitochondria healthy through autophagy keeps the heart alive. Exercise also has the ability to stimulate autophagy in tissues not performing exercise. Contracting skeletal muscle secretes chemical messengers including interleukin-6 or IL-6 into the blood. Once in the blood, IL-6 can reach the liver to induce autophagy in the liver. Lipophagy is a type of autophagy that breaks down lipids, also known as fats. Lipophagy is the breakdown of fat droplets into free fatty acids. 
When fats are in the form of free fatty acids, they are able to be metabolized, meaning degraded to produce ATP. Thus, exercise-induced lipophagy reduces the fat content in the liver and has been shown to protect the liver from fatty liver disease. IL-6 from contracting skeletal muscle has also been shown to stimulate autophagy in beta cells of the pancreas. The beta cells of the pancreas are crucial to metabolism as they produce insulin. Exercise training has been shown to increase sensitivity to insulin in other tissues, which can help protect from diabetes. But exercise can also stimulate autophagy in the cells that produce insulin. Death of the beta cells through apoptosis is one cause of diabetes mellitus. Autophagy of the beta cells of the pancreas leads to an increase in anti-apoptotic proteins in the beta cells and protection from apoptosis, the programmed death of the cells. A lack of autophagy is linked to overall decreased cell volume of beta cells in the pancreas, meaning without autophagy, there is an increase in the death of beta cells. Thus, exercise training not only increases sensitivity to insulin, but also preserves the production of insulin by keeping the beta cells of the pancreas alive through autophagy. Lastly, excessive autophagy can cause the death of heart cells after myocardial infarction. One means of measuring the rate of autophagy is measuring the LC32 to LC31 protein ratio. As autophagy is activated, the protein LC31 is converted to LC32. Thus, an increase in the ratio marks an increase in the rate of autophagy. Heart cells that have suffered myocardial infarction often have extremely high levels of autophagy as measured by high LC32 to LC31 ratios. Aerobic exercise training has been shown to bring down the LC32 to LC31 ratio in these heart cells and increase survivability and improved heart function after myocardial infarction. Aerobic exercise has the ability to both increase autophagy to keep cells alive and decrease autophagy when autophagy can be dangerous. Thus, aerobic exercise can regulate autophagy to remain inside a rate of autophagy that is beneficial for heart health. But what is the process of autophagy? After AMPK is activated, it activates the protein ULK1. ULK1 initiates the formation of the autophagosome. The autophagosome is a double membrane vesicle that partially forms and begins to collect damaged particles. In the case of mitochondria or other damaged organelles, the autophagosome can bind to proteins on the damaged mitochondria, then the autophagosome surrounds the damaged portion and finishes forming the double membrane. At this point, the autophagosome binds with the membrane of the lysosome forming one unit known as the autolysosome. The autolysosome allows the damaged contents of the autophagosome to be exposed to the inside of the lysosome. The lysosome is extremely acidic and contains extremely strong enzymes that degrade the damaged particles. The damaged particles are then released and can be used for fuel to produce ATP or to build proteins or other components of the cell. This allows the cell the opportunity to degrade unneeded parts of itself for energy when under stress or simply to use the particles again in rebuilding parts of the cell. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to our channel.